Okay. Uh, welcome everybody, uh, people online as well as here. Uh, first, before we start, as it was so noisy upstairs with the breakfast, um, I want to introduce to our chef today who prepared all that. And I know that you don't do that uh, often. So it was, it was a bit of work to get him here. Uh, it's Carlos and that it would be great if you would say a few words about yourself too and about the food you offered today. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, my name is Carlos, I'm from Barcelona. Um, I'm a chef. Uh, also, I have a restaurant here in Rotermani. It's called Siesta, but the Siesta Pass Bar. And um, yeah, normally I don't do these events because I'm really busy with the restaurant. And um, but I have one person over here. She's the <laughs> she's the one uh, <laughs> put me here, and I I kind of don't like her. Right? She's there. <laughs> Because it's too much and the kitchen is really small and also for me it's really hard to, I don't know, give to people something different. Um, what you eat today is actually Venezuelan and Colombian food. Uh, I've been there many times and I, I think it's good experience to have something different than pancakes or, I don't know, yogurt. So something that I try to put also to the people have some different experience for the food. Kitchen is too small, I'm so sorry if it's... Uh, yeah, it was not so much food or it was so, I don't know, something that you don't like it. But yeah, I tried to do something really special and different to people try um, food from South America. Um, yeah, also for the coffee, I also say um, to bring Kenya coffee and Uwanda, uh, Uwanda coffee. It's just because I actually am barista too and I'm sommelier also. Um, well, I work in El Bulli. I have three Michelin stars as well, but it was a long time ago. <laughs> so, uh, yes. But that was uh, 2009 and 10 and 11. So, that doesn't matter right now. So, uh, now I do some just um, uh, tapas, a restaurant, really traditional food, because I really love it. But I also love coffee. So, when they asked me about to do this event, they also asked me about to do this. Um, which coffee I want to bring here. And I choose Rwanda and uh, Kenya because they are really different. They are really um, flavor and also a strong uh, personality, I would say, and really a strong body, like a wine. So one or two of them was, um, uh, for example, Rwanda. This is one of my favorite one. It's just because it's one of the first uh, coffee uh, growing in the world. We talk about 550 um, before Christ, or I don't know how you say. But and, uh, Kenya is more for the farm from Brazil. Someone bring when there was colony from uh, British. Um, some people from Brazil bring this to Kenya. But they are really close uh, together, but they are really different too. So I hope you like it. Um, yeah, if it's one, someone wants to try my food, so you can go to Siesta Tapas Bar, and I hope you enjoy the food. Okay? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for Thank coming. You so Thank you so much. So, now I would ask Marcos here too, for a few words in the beginning. Um, so, uh, today we're going to start uh, first with a guest speaker, but before that, uh, a bit about the technicalities. So, uh, after after we will have our guest speaker. <laughs> first of all, thank you for taking us into Karma office. Thank you for coming. Uh, everybody loves it, I can see it in, in their faces. Um, and, and then, um, after our guest speaker, I will give a brief overview of, of our last year. Then we will continue with a quick voting and then we can continue networking upstairs. Hopefully Carlos is still there, but maybe he has to leave, let's see. Um, so maybe you want to say a few words too about our last year. It was a good year. We had a thank you for a good board. <laughs> thank you. Fun working with you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. So I already see that we have done a mistake uh, uh, renting this office. It's too small. <laughs> uh, quite, quite many people are, are still standing, but, but it is designed. We, we, we call this office uh, home office. Um, seventh floor is, is office, eighth floor is home. And, and, and the thinking is coming a bit from COVID times where it started to blend uh, how the work in future could, could look like. But it is designed to host you here. So the more often you come, uh, the happier we are. 
and then of course food as well. <laughs> um, 4am this morning I woke up, I lost sleep, uh, started to write something about this speech today, um, but it looks like super you boring at the you moment. Forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we, we, we try to understand where the technology is, is heading in these days. Two curves are, are, are significantly trending upwards. One is technology development and the other one is destruction. As we see currently, the war, threat of war developing. And, uh, and we try to understand where these trends are going. Uh, maybe more from the technology perspective, but there are definitely overlaps uh, to the destruction as well. Uh, the threat from AI, that, that is a um, catchy headline. Uh, but what the reality could be, um, I, I promise we cannot find the answer today, even with, uh, with Christian, I'm afraid, <laughs> as we discussed earlier upstairs. Um, there will be great numbers about the last year. Ecosystem has done well. Um, this year has started, and it would be really good to hear your thinking as well. It has been a slightly awkward start. It has been very quiet, kind of silent. And uh, how to understand it? Um, just if we look at the number of uh, new investments in startup ecosystem last year, first quarter, let's take Bolt off. It's 300, 400 million with Bolt. It was like 900 million. This year started off with uh, 60 million. Uh, very few deals. And then um, and, and we, we need to understand where it's heading to. Um, so maybe some, some, some words on this one. As SVCA, I think the best thing what we can do is um, share the knowledge. And most initiatives last year are in this domain. We kick-started podcast, we kick-started VC masterclass. We, this year already we did second, um, uh, second time um, trainings or, or courses in, in universities um, to get the knowledge of venture capital, private equity to young people as, as, as soon as possible, as early as possible. So a lot is about sharing and building the, sure, the networks. Yeah. Roadshow as well. And Roadshow as well. Um, the US one, next one's coming up. I highly recommend to pay attention. Uh, they, they seem to be very valuable to the ecosystem. Um, but Kadri has later on to tell so yep. much more uh, on, on these ones. Um, so what if we start with Christian yes. now? Yes. And um, hear a bit um, how our future looks like in coming <laughs> years. Welcome. If there are so much left. <laughs> Thank you. I think I need it, yes. Cool. No, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I think that Although I should be talking about the future, I will start as an academic from definitions. And before that, a couple of words about myself. Um, I studied mathematics in University of Manchester. I came back to Estonia to do PhD in computer science and AI. Uh, one thing is missing here because it is now a PDF. Uh, in Estonia, I'm most famous for writing a book called uh, uh, Bedside Reading about Mathematics. It's the most sold popular science book in Estonia ever in 150 years. Uh, uh, <laughs> And it has always been free access with CC license, uh, so everyone can download it for free, use it uh, even for commercial purposes. It wasn't a uh, project motivated by money. Uh, in here, <laughs> there should be a GIF uh, uh, system playing games. Uh, in, while I was doing my PhD, I had a hobby project where one random paper came out um, uh, by a tiny company with 10 people. And uh, this paper was about a system that was able to learn to play arbitrary computer game. Uh, you are old people in here, so you might remember uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Atari uh, computer games. So the system was able to learn to play arbitrary Atari computer game, uh, many of them in a superhuman uh, level. So. I saw this paper in a preprint and we replicated this work. So a scientific paper is like three pages and, and we tried to write it as an open source project. And uh, not many people noticed it, even my supervisor didn't approve this work. Uh, and then this tiny company was acquired by Google for half a billion. Uh, it was deep mind uh, uh, for next decade, the top one AI company in the world. And uh, uh, 
And then we became famous because we were the biggest experts of DeepMind externally. So we gave interviews to Nature and Science and people went to work with Elon Musk in OpenAI and in DeepMind and so on. I worked in different uh, places in Europe, uh, uh, in London for longer. And then I was the first employee in Starship Technologies, uh, Estonian company doing self-driving uh, delivery robots. Uh, I was an engineer, team lead, department lead and under me. Uh, I was there for four years. I was responsible for robots being safe and not doing accidents and, and being autonomous in the real world. And then uh, four years ago, uh, uh, I founded Pactium, which is doing autonomous negotiations. Um, that's about me. I will reference back all these things uh, uh, w uh, while I talk. So what is AI? Uh, this is a confusing topic, uh, uh, usually due to media. Uh, uh, mixing up words. Uh, uh, for example, uh, if you read about Wikipedia, then in the middle of the last century, the biggest AI achievement of Western world is IBM's Deep Blue beating uh, Gary Kasparov in 1997 inches. On the right side, you see uh, an image <laughs> that represents a nuclear bomb simulation. Like, or it can be weather simulation or any physical simulation of buildings or whatever. Um, by common knowledge, common feeling of our culture and Wikipedia, the left side is considered AI, the right side is just physics. Um, in reality, the left side computer system is not learning, doesn't have any machine learning, and uh, is, doesn't use any compute nowadays. A phone will beat a best player in the world. On the right side, 100x compute, a lot of machine learning, uh, all the parameters and things must be optimized to there, not called AI. So what is AI and where is the confusion? Uh, maybe people don't feel it confusing. I am always felt confused by how people use these words uh, because I am technical and precise with my definitions. So coming back to the definitions, AI is a large field. There are things like uh, like in chess, you just look, moves ahead, uh, and it feels like an agent and superhuman. So we call it AI, uh, although no machine learning. Then there is machine learning. Machine learning has thousands of different algorithms. Um, and then subfield of machine learning that used to be popular 15 years ago, <laughs> 10 years ago, five years ago, was uh, deep learning. Uh, all these image recognitions and, and self-driving car uh, 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 came out of uh, uh, the same ideas. Uh, and there are thousands of deep learning algorithms. One of them uh, called transformer models and then later uh, named or branded to large language models, uh, easier word probably, uh, is now the hype via ChatGPT. And in large language models, there are also actually thousands of models, uh, uh, which we usually in media know only one of them. I'm gonna go over all of these by examples uh, of uh, 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 defining it. So. AI, Starship Technologies, that's my daughter uh, driving around. Uh, uh, we ourselves made a law uh, in Estonia which made it illegal to transport people with this machine. Uh, uh, I was there, these are all my images, I wrote them personally. Uh, 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 this guy is seeing the world, mapping all the lines and then localizing and uh, itself. Like if you see a line and you know you move a meter, then you know how far this one line segment is in the map and you can localize yourself. You can also, it has two cameras like our human eyes. If you keep a finger and you do this, you see that the finger is jumping. You can estimate the distance of the finger if you have two cameras. So you have two things, you estimate the points and out of this you will get lots of points and you can estimate things. Uh, Starship has the largest revenue in the world in self-driving space in cars, drones and everything. Uh, I, after four years of Starship when they were, there was revenue and they were self-driving uh, uh, and already better than humans driving them, at least over the internet, there was not a single machine learning algorithm in this robot. It was the top one AI company in Estonia. Uh, now I founded Pactium, we are top one in the world in, as well as Starship in autonomous negotiations. Uh, our customers are Walmart, Marsk and, and so on. We have 90 employees, 35 million of funding. Unfortunately, not karma, but it was close call. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, and 
Uh, and uh, we are doing autonomous negotiations. We make it simple. We say which parameters we are optimizing for, uh, and we ask from our customer what is the value of these parameters. So we might only negotiate three terms uh, or four or five terms, and we know the value, how they are valued by our customer. It's one too many cases. Our customers are very large, and they have hundreds of thousands of mi or millions of con similar contracts. Like bank might have 100,000 mortgage contracts, and they are all the same by text, but a couple of numbers are different. So we make these simple cases. And then we are conducting negotiations. Negotiations are open-ended, uh, not open-ended. They are structured chat, like in old school computer games. You press buttons, you order some preferences, you make counteroffers, you do trade-offs. And it works fully, on, uh, uh, fully autonomously, meaning that we send out a link to a supplier, they do a negotiation. If they reach a deal, we generate the contract. We send you signing via DocuSign. If it's signed, we update the data in our customer's database, and we are producing them value uh, money in fully autopilot. Again, the best in the world, producing uh, tens or hundreds of millions to customers. No machine learning. Machine learning. Uh, of course, machine learning comes into play. This is our use case of logistics, uh, because there are so many lanes and so many things, we don't know how to optimize parameters and things automatically. So later, after one year, machine learning was part of Pactum's uh, uh, product as well, uh, in some use cases. So this is uh, uh, how we use machine learning in logistics, where there are hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, agreements between lanes and the full history of these lanes, and humans cannot make these decisions better than uh, computers, so machine learning is part of it. Deep learning. Deep learning came to uh, Starship technology as well. After four years or five years, uh, the technology reached the limit where we couldn't anymore make better programs. So uh, I hired a team in Africa, 20 people. They were drawing boxes uh, for people. And, and then we trained our uh, deep learning algorithms. And then the car, uh, machines had an understanding of people, cars, their directions, and we estimated the sizes, and then put it together with radars time of flight cameras, uh, sonars, and everything else. But deep learning was part of Starship uh, after four years uh, uh, of there. And of course, the main topic and hype that everyone is interested in is now large language models. Mm. Uh, it is indeed impressive. Uh, this is time where a service was made up available, how many months it took to reach 100 million users. Usually Estonia is about a year behind, uh, like, I don't know, Twitter is not there, but Twitter was used by Americans a year or two before Estonians because this number is usually measured in 30 months and it takes time before they reach to these strange places like Estonia. ChatGPT reached to Estonia on the same day when it was released and people used it at the same time and they reached 100 million users uh, in two months. If TikTok is now in the media and in, in already in present level debates in America and China and, and peak conflicts, uh, I can assure you uh, ChatGPT will produce a lot bigger conflicts. Uh, and this will be in media a lot more than TikTok has ever been. Um, so large language models. Again, in reality, we only hear, hear about ChatGPT, but yesterday was Google's uh, 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 IO, uh, and actually their models are not that worse anymore, they're all about the same. But in reality, of course, there are thousands of them uh, uh, that you can use. They talk about tokens, so large language models just predict uh, tokens. And token is a small uh, part of the word. In English, quite often, one word is one token. Token is like a one unit that goes in, into it. Uh, so on average, it's roughly like 0 0.75 words. Longer words are multiple tokens in English. All the symbols are their own tokens. In Estonian, these tokens, they are, they are made there to optimize training and optimize the, uh, the, um, using it. In Estonian, it takes two times more token per word because the letter O and stuff, they are not tokenized. So they go there by single tokens. Uh, uh, and therefore, uh, it is more difficult for it to think in Estonian a tiny bit. Uh, there are some animations in here in my original slides. Uh, it seems that I didn't translate it, but the words come in and it predicts the next word. And then the, next, the word that it predicted goes in there and then it predicts the next one. And this is put as an input and then next. 
and it is just trying to predict the next word and it's trained to predict the next word. But of course, the magic of it is that it was able, without any tuning anything, it was able to do calculations, learn to translate, and so on, because in order to compress the, all the knowledge of the human world <laughs> into this thing, it didn't anymore just predict the next word. It is representing a concept of a cat, not in one language, but in all languages, because it's more efficient. Then you can just use it in all languages, and it starts to understand the world. There are many steps in training of it. Um, uh, unsupervised learning it means that all the text is put in there randomly. You don't. There are no labels. This is the most biggest part of training. This is costs uh, in tens of millions of electricity bill just to train it. Then there is also pairs of how you do supervised learning that if this is input, then this is good output. And they also have hundreds or thousands of people annotating these pairs and using everything else. Uh, and then there is the last bit, is the reinforcement learning from human feedback. So if in ChatGPT you say thumbs up or thumbs down, then this is used. The last bits don't change the underlying fundamental model. It's more how this model is used. And basically, when ChatGPT comes out with a versions 3, 4, 5, then this is the first one is changed. When they change after the dot 3.5, then the last ones are drained, uh, uh, but not the underlying largest part of the model. So GPT-4, of course, we all have seen how impressive it is. Um, uh, Estonian, Estonian children are one of the best, uh, at least in high school level, not anymore in university level, but in high school level, they are one of the best in the world, or the best in mathematics. I've done Estonian math exam, like you all, maybe, or many of you. I've also done the American one and the British one. Estonian one is most complex out of these, and uh, most open, and, and, and so on. American high school exam is you just have one number, and you need to write it down, and it's machine uh, readable transfer. We also need to show in Estonian the thinking and, and the way we calculate and reasonings and tests and everything else in there. So wha how good is ChatGPT 4? So this is the math exam. Like it, feeling good. Uh, <laughs> the last one, uh, 2022 in Estonia. Uh, crazy stuff. I, I, uh, I got 97 points, but it was 15 years ago at the moment. I wouldn't anymore. It's quite difficult. Like, I don't know, sinus. Alpha plus beta minus cosine cube is cube. Some like simplifying them, doing graphs, some shapes that move and may produce uh, produce uh, 3D uh, shapes and and calculating them these volumes and things with integrals and like quite advanced stuff. Uh, most people get uh, less than 30 points out of 100. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so. We uh, made an extremely simple uh, <laughs> uh, pre uh, prompt in Estonian, just solve the exam and explain your working. And then we just copy pasted the text into GPT-4 and uh, it produced the answers. And if we uh, copy pasted them as English then, or as text, then the answers are like this. But if this exercise is like this, then mathematicians write it in code like this to visualize these things. You cannot write them in text uh, uh, message. And then we inserted this code, and this then it gives us back it in the same way, which we can just copy paste to visualize it like this, uh, purely without any kind of hacks, anything, everything in Estonian, full code, not a single error in this code that it produced. And in total, uh, uh, our estimation, uh, both of us were, uh, were used to be math teachers, about 80 points, about top 5% of people in Estonia. Basically, uh, my level. <laughs> in mathematics, but it's way, way better in language, uh, in poetry, in understanding texts than I am. That's it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a couple of... Uh, yes, that's, that's another annoying thing. Most of the mistakes were uh, like sloppy mistakes. They weren't actually misconceptions about the underlying thing. It's very easy to kind of get something wrong, like 
Like I also lost three points out of 100, not because I didn't know, I just made a mistake somewhere. There were similar mistakes. Um, if someone shares you the slides, then I recommend these uh, uh, things from here. I really like this first uh, paper, Sparks of Artificial General Intelligence, analyzing it from very different perspectives, showing that this thing cannot be pattern matched. Like for example, there is an image written in code and there is nothing mentioned about what is on the image. And you talk about uh, into this thing that, oh, please make this image a bit more, I don't know, there was a, a cow drawn there or whatever. Make this thing a bit more fat and make it more happier. <laughs> Put it in the context, context of bad mood. It changes the code that produces the image without ever seeing the image. And many other examples, inventing new chemicals and, uh, and doing whatever crazy work uh, in all the domains, the same code base. So definitely, uh, the second link, 150 slides, very detailed, very technical, answers to every question. Uh, um, if you want to understand it in code, GPT model written in 60 lines of code from scratch, from absolute using nothing uh, to fully understand it. It's very simple, uh, yes. Um, some funny TED talk, a bit optimistic one. Chat GPT 2.0, I mean, what are we doing? It for me most imp uh, impressive. Of course, there are a lot of plugins, but for me, the next one, Auto GPT. There has never, never ever been a more popular uh, GitHub project. People share code and do a project. It's one done by one hacker. It got uh, 100,000 stars in like one month, more than. ChatGPT, PyTorch, NumPy, Python, like more impressive than anything that has ever existed. And these agents are autonomous agents containing multiple ChatGPTs in their brain. They make subtasks and, and prioritize them and trying to fulfill a goal. They can go to the internet, do stuff, they can execute code. Uh, you can tell it, uh, please earn me a million dollars and it tries to learn what are good business ideas. Then it starts to try to write code and app then starts making accounts to earn money or whatever. Of course, it fails in all this, but very impressive. That's what I'm experimenting in my free time at the moment. If you want to do only one thing after this call, I recommend the AI Dilemma uh, YouTube one hour video. Uh, it's introduced and managed by Steve Wozniak, founder of uh, uh, Apple, and uh, the talk is presented by guys who made the movie Social Dilemma where Facebook uh, and social network influences to the society might not be the best depression and democracy stuff and so on. So they are saying that maybe we should think ahead before it's too late how it affects the society. But it also gives an extremely good overview of, of all the technology trends in the uh, last half a year, everything we can do with it. Uh, that's it, thank you. Get the microphone. Oh, sorry. So we follow up with a um, few questions and, um, and a bit of discussion as well. Okay, sounds good. Sure. So, so uh, you mentioned, not mentioned, but you are co-founder of, of Paktum. Unfortunately, Karma didn't get to invest like you mentioned. <laughs> but um, do you see Paktum now differently, like before and after OpenAI? Um, and the question is coming from the angle that uh, do you see potential threat that, um, you know, everybody can develop soon something or it already exists. Your product will be commoditized uh, using, using um, chat GPT. Um, do you see it differently? I think uh, every investor of ours and every employee of Pactium and every client sees it like this, but I don't see it like this. And therefore my job has changed a lot because now I need to explain it all the time. Why don't we use it? <laughs> well, and so on. It's not that easy to use these things in business to business context. They are uh, not too easily con controlled in a sense that they might lie, they might insult, they might do bad deals. Uh, like doing it in a business to business context, it's like extreme. Like every sentence should, is going through legal in these environments. They are so regulated, so controlled, so much PR risk. Um, and of course, if you're actually influencing the business, like your decisions put into effect new deals, 
new cargo moving, new warehouses having different goods, it, it, it's, it's not that easy. Uh, 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 of course, as it is important, I am personally uh, doing it, I'm programming it, I'm playing with it, and I knew these technologies uh, uh, decades ago, and they are not fundamentally different. Uh, <laughs> deep learning was there 20 years ago, and they also predicted next character, and they were also already amazing. So it's not that it's so new, it's so new for media because it made some leaps there, but uh, it all also had emergent properties a decade ago. Uh, so for me, it has been still a linear, uh, usual exponential growth uh, for decades. Uh, uh, it's just reached the level, but it doesn't mean that you can always use it. Like, I guess Starship is maybe more famous example in Estonia. If deep learning came out, the question would be, oh, is Starship in danger? No, it isn't. <laughs> Nobody can do it. It's too difficult. Uh, and our problem is not related to this chat. It's related to our customers, our long sales cycle, our <laughs> legal problems, security problems, uh, uh, and so on. This component of negotiation is, is still uh, small there. And I, I think people are de derailed by the real stuff, by the hype, in that context at least. Our customers, of course, are the largest in the world, and, and, and it's, it's a bit different. It doesn't mean that uh, 100 unicorns will not be produced, uh, but IBM is still making their mind frames. Uh, it's, it's, the world doesn't work like this. <laughs> still, to, to challenge on that one, we, we had portfolio day with our companies early this week. Uh, one of our portfolio companies, Lucinity, which is doing um, uh, software for anti-money laundry, uh, presented a demo. Um, they implemented um, ChatGPT to the product, and some functionalities in AML, which formerly took um, for humans roughly six hours to do, um, their demo does it in three minutes. And you could imagine it, it's a massive leap. It's a significant efficiency. Now it leads to thinking, uh, okay, we launch it. It will be super popular. There is huge queue of customers who want to see demo. Um, but what if, like, um, it's easy to implement for all the competition? Mm -hmm. Its significant advantage is commoditized next day. And even further, if you think about all your portfolio companies, in most verticals, there is something where this technology can be used, which will either make it or, or, or kill it. Mm -hmm. Do you see it as, as a potentially implemented mm -hmm. heavily? and commoditized, do you mm. see more unicorns based on it or more failures based on it at the end I of the day? I guess you should know more that uh, at least 90% of your portfolio companies will, will go bankrupt. <laughs> so uh, in that sense, <laughs> in that sense... We, we have uh, some investors. <laughs> in that sense, uh, mm, yes, maybe the trends are made faster. More companies will go past faster and more new unicorns are produced faster. As always, uh, uh, um, um, things are moving quicker. Um, but I mean, is the threat that it can be commoditized? Like, what's the top company in Estonia? Wise? How many competitors they had when they came? 100? 1,000? What are they doing? Like, one Excel file, another Excel file, you transfer money from one to another. <laughs> That's the top one company in Estonia. Uh, just like transferring money from one place to another. Like I, I don't think that the um, success or failure of companies defined mainly by this. Uh, uh, I think, and do you think it about the other way? Tech companies are definitely more prone and easier to utilize all these technologies than non-tech companies. Uh, and of course, we are using uh, a large language model model-based things in Pactium as well. Uh, like, probably every employee uses it in some context, either in emails, translation, or programmers in helping to write code. It is a standard, not maybe all, but I, I would say that at least 70% of programmers in Pactium are using it already now. And of course we use it. And it's actually also almost in production in one of our products in one sub-use case. Mm. There is an agent uh, listening to some chats and checking whether 
there is availability of trucks uh, and it was just otherwise maybe maybe we wouldn't have done it because it didn't have that much value but it was so easy to do so we did it so for us it's definitely tech companies and uh, easier to utilize these technologies but i don't think that it changes the game fundamentally it's just the tech progress is constantly speeding up and and things are changing quicker so new unicorns are produced faster and they will go bankrupt faster as well some of the companies <laughs> um we, we discussed upstairs a bit um is there a risk that um, it will be out of control and um and and you you're probably very aware of the call for for making a pause for six months mm -hmm. yes and, back, and back, back team's first investor is jan Dalin. yeah and 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 <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the speed of the technology uh, development, what can how can six months make difference? You you, you might have good insight to it. Um, what is the hope behind the mm -hmm. pause for six months? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't sign it, uh, but uh, why? Maybe the same argument. Mm -hmm. um, but like the world is rather complex. If we have had some problems with. Um, I don't know, ozone layer of destroying it, uh, then the first agreements were actually useless as well. But they somehow triggered people trying to make an agreement. And then the second and third agreement actually had a positive impact and they started actually reducing it. So maybe it's like memorandum of agreement that it's important and maybe it doesn't solve anything, but at least it puts people together and, and, and they start thinking about it. And I think this is a wise thing to do. Uh, I guess there are two different type of types of risks. One risk is just the technology itself about legal, uh, legal frameworks and how it is used in the society and how we want it to be used. Uh, um, for example, for some reason, these large language model based things are not enforced so much. Like if you're in Bing chat, it might tell you, I don't know, it might promote pedophilia or, 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 or killing people, nothing happens. If a, our, my customer support person would call to my customer, oh, you should, I don't know, rape children and, and kill people, <laughs> then I would be in trouble. But for some reason, if this system is telling it, nothing happens. So I think we need time to be able to start regulating it and, and keeping people accountable who will do harm with it. But at the moment, it seems that it's getting out of control. So that's one type of like usual common everyday risk, protecting our children and so on. And then, of course, there is this um, more fundamental risk of, uh, of, of uh, full human existence problem. <laughs> uh, and, um, and in there, uh, yes, we should work on it as well, <laughs> because it's a big risk, even if the probability of this happening is small. So, so um, these topics will, are getting a lot of like media clicks, um, and and um, humans um, might have something which is called consciousness. And um, in best case, we use our brains consciously, and we have value system. At the same time, genetically, we have um, unstoppable desire to live, to survive. Um, to become rich, to become famous, to have power. It kind of thrives uh, at least part or most of the humankind. Do, do you see that, um, I'm not sure what is the right term now, artificial intelligence, chat GPT or whatsoever, can develop consciousness? And mm. um, what, it, what it potentially could mean? Mm. I think, uh, I guess there are, again, maybe two separate topics. The one topic is the consciousness one. Um, my personal belief is that uh, we don't know much about it and we are unable to say and probably the way we talk about it and the way we think about it is fundamentally flawed and completely incorrect. Uh, and we don't know how you talk about it and so on. Um, it's, um, it's, it's like talking about like 
I wonder why the God created monkeys and people to be the same and then you're wondering and wondering and then you're discussing and then someone comes up with the idea of evolution and then you understand that all your 2000 ideas of discussions were completely misled. Uh, like they don't make any sense. Um, and I don't know, recently um, discussing about uh, in physics why experiments give different kind of results and, and, and why uh, they gave it and the kind of confu confusion and I don't know, chaos theory and things were invented and so on. And then still um, decades or centuries of confusion uh, because you assume something about completely incorrectly so that you even cannot think about it and you realize that the universe, universe is probabilistic, not deterministic, and, and quantum physics is invented. You just couldn't even conceive it. It was just an idea that is impossible to even think about. And now we talk about consciousness. We have absolutely no idea. Are we conscious when we are sleeping? Are we conscious when we are in coma? Are uh, other animals conscious? Are bees conscious? Are trees con conscious? Are large language models conscious? I think we are even not, we don't know anything about it. Uh, we don't have any way of even being sure we yeah, talk about it in the correct, correct framework. And I, I, I have big hopes that in my lifetime we will have a Darwin or Einstein who will explain it to us how you think about it. And of course probably we will think that he's mad and, and or she's mad and we will not understand it, but, but um, maybe some of us do, and that would be uh, extreme pleasure of, intellectual pleasure of understanding something so important. Um, I, if someone wants to read something deeper, I am recommending a book, uh, Structure of Scientific Revolutions by Tuma, Thomas Kanu or Knut, it's written, um, Structure of Scientific Revolutions. And I think we are exactly in that moment that we have so much studies about so much opinion, so many contradicting things. Um, I don't know, in neuroscience, we have free will experiment. You can press whenever you want the button, but actually from brain waves, you can predict it like three or five seconds before you came the idea of having the free will. So the idea of free will, extremely confusing uh, and so on. So there are so many con contradicting results, I think, and the AI supports maybe as well our new ideas and understandings of what it means to be human and what it means to be conscious. So I, I'm hopeful that we might know. I think what you also hinted with this con uh, question is that if they will be conscious that they are somehow more powerful or more uh, um, able to have their aims or, or destroy things uh, or, or, or just make us redundant. Mm. I think with or without consciousness, this is as likely. <laughs> uh, we don't need to understand how DNA biology and things work in birds in order to invent flying, but we can still fly with planes without knowing anything about the, the biology of birds. You may, you might get inspiration from it, but it's not how we invented flying. Um, we can still make powerful things who will want to achieve their objective um, and uh, that's why I also recommend it, AutoGPT. I think it's one of the most uh, interesting experiment for me. It's completely new for me, uh, uh, and uh, they are doing, these agents are doing amazing things. And does it matter whether they're conscious or not? Mm -hmm. so, so basically what you're saying, as we don't have understanding of the fundamental building blocks, how we operate, and 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 who we are and so on then it means that any prediction about the future is as wrong as any other one yeah i guess predicting future always has been rather complex uh, uh and um like i i am an entrepreneur uh, uh, i've started many companies and i'm also always thinking what will happen next and already for a decade, out of curiosity, I've been thinking, what will happen, what will be the next important business ideas if fully self-driving will be reality? All the warehouses will be self-driving, all the cars will be self-driving and so on. 
like just a hypothetical uh, thing. And I'm unable to invent any good business ideas. I don't know why. It's, it's the same thing when internet was created. Yes, you know it's going to be powerful, but it's extremely difficult to invent that Google and Facebook will be most powerful. Like it, it's, it's just, it's up to anything and it's still so vague and so open-ended. Uh, so, yes, prediction is hard. Uh, and, uh, and I would say that predicting something at the moment for 10 years is uh, delusional. <laughs> at the same time, <clears throat> one of my favorite uh, research papers, which is in peer review at the moment, is, um, is about the question why aliens haven't visited Earth yet. The answer is there is not enough intelligence to <laughs> that it would be worse to come over. So um, um, our time is up. Yes, maybe we could take like one or two questions from the audience. If do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, as nothing is predictable, <laughs> then um, none of the questions. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't mean that we cannot uh, reflect and think, and we are able to think still the most powerful thinkers we know about are us. There is one question. Uh, yep. You get the mic. Thank you for the presentation. Since you're a smart person, how do you take, um, how do you work with your bias of being of your own experience? So you have experience that something fails, something worked, and when you're making your future decisions, how do you deal with the the experience that you already have. Mm -hmm. I guess as I am smart and successful than most, <laughs> then uh, most important thing I should do that I should use this bias. <laughs> Maybe it has been uh, correct bias. Uh, so I should sometimes stay strong to my intuition, even if it isn't, even if I cannot explain it sometimes, and even if I don't know it's correct, like decision by consensus or decision by extreme logical thinking is not most often the best to greatest innovation. Uh, so uh, it does, I don't need to make myself a uh, calculated machine. I want to live the life to the fullest and I want to enjoy it and I believe in my Biases. As ChatGPT learns from internet and, and this consists ideas what we have, can we feed that idea to live fullest and enjoy to ChatGPT as well? First of all, ChatGPT doesn't learn when you're interacting with it. And that maybe is one of the big differences uh, with us. We cannot do anything without changing who we are. We cannot even think without changing our memory. They are interacting and thinking and doing things without changing them. Uh, so maybe this is one fundamental difference. Uh, 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 yeah. And is there one more question? Nope. Thank you, Kristen. Thanks for coming. We're giving you emotions. So there's the video and this photo and AI is also largely there. So thank you for coming. Really hard to come on stage after you, to be honest. <laughs> so I'll take five minutes uh, instead of 20 or so, and then we can get um, into voting and uh, enjoy, enjoy the snacks. Um, yeah, so uh, first I wanted to thank our board. Uh, it's been really an active year uh, and, and uh, really active board members, lots of discussions. Thank you. Um, and also I wanted to introduce and welcome and thank Marianne, who's here, who's actually behind of us having really good time here, um, preparing all the facilities here. So she's been with us now almost a year. So if you don't know her, then, then find her. Uh, we also have uh, new members, which I'm really happy about. Um, and uh, some of them are here also, but um, 
but we have uh, PwC joined us, like with the with the whole company. They used to be with us only with legal. Uh, we have Star uh, Startup Wise guys. Uh, we have Mitty and uh, the Enroot family office. Is Mika couldn't be here, but they joined with five LPs. Um, and then our newest uh, joiners, uh, Nordic Secondary Fund and Icebreaker, are for in the new foreign fund category. And the most fresh news, which we haven't even launched, and Derek is here, is that Verge, uh, Verge Health Tech Fund will also become SVC member. So I'm truly happy of, of us growing, which means that we most probably have an impact in, in what we do. Uh, so a bit about fundraising, I always show in, in the annual general meeting, so it's, it's uh, the latest are, are, are the first one uh, which have been announced. So first, first on in, in March, um, SmartGap announced investing uh, 30 million in, in the NATO Innovation Fund. Uh, Startup Wise Guys in February, a 25 million uh, fund uh, target was 50. This was the first close, right? Um, in September, Trind raised 55. Livonia in September, 157 above their target. Um, and I think it was almost the double size of the first fund, but you can correct me if you're here, uh, Livonia's people. Uh, then Smart Cap. Uh, has announced to to invest uh, 20 million into two green tech funds, and uh, as I understand, before summer we will have announcements. Or Sila can tell us. Uh, then in June last year, Super Angel, uh, a 50 mil fund, uh, investing primarily in deep tech. Uh, the largest um, that came to the market last year was Plural, not our member yet, but we're in no negotiations. Um, BPM Mezzanine uh, in April, uh, was it 60, Galber? Sorry, the number is not here. Yeah, 60. Uh, then in February, United Angels rebranded to specialist and came out with a 50 million fund and changed the now closing their 49 million fund. So it was a I think, at least in, during my times, I think in history, uh, in Estonia, the most active um, time has been um, uh, now in fundraising. So good for us, in a sense that it was all, um, uh, I would say, closed, or most of the closings were done before the crisis. So now I will really take only a few minutes because I think that those who want to know know what we do, <laughs> and I will not take much time. But uh, but we've taken in the board basically um, like, like why why we come together is is that we do um, do work on a regional level, meaning mostly uh, Nordic Baltic or the new Nordics level. Uh, we do different local activities, uh, meaning that the Estonian funding market would become bigger and there would be new fund managers and the, so that the, the current fund managers could grow. So we're sort of facilitating that. And uh, the wider audience, uh, this is our mission as well, that they would know what private equity and venture capital is, meaning either it's students in the university, it's media, or, or it's whoever, your grandmother. So, uh, so this is a bit of our, our mission as well. Uh, and some of the highlights I just brought out uh, in these categories from last year. So last year we kicked off and this year it continued at the university program with, with Taltec and the Estonian Business School. Thanks so much for the, all, the, all the lecturers, all fund managers or active, uh, active participants in the industry. And we are looking to continue it and most probably maybe even expand it. And uh, as you may know, our Lithuanian college, colleagues copied it. And they, it was really popular in, in Lithuania as well. So, um, so, and actually Polish colleagues have also asked for information. So I guess we gave, gave a good example. Uh, I think the second highlight that brought out is, is, a, is a post COVID thing definitely. And then we are discussing basically in all our board meetings, the next de destinations, uh, US Roadshow with many of you participating in, in October. Um, and now looking this year, most probably to UK and maybe next year in Asia, but let's see what the market does. Um, and also sort of smaller ones to, to, to the neighboring countries. Um, for example, on Monday, we're going to Denmark with the prime minister. Uh, with, with investing members. 
so something I'm also happy about the Startup Estonia tender that is SVC won. So we kicked off with a Nordic VC masterclass, meaning that each quarter we bring one Nordic fund manager to sort of teach how to build a fund, whether it's fundraising, whether it's building diversity, whether it's uh, building a deep tech fund. The third one is coming in June. We'll be announcing that soon, and it will be a Danish VC. And the fourth one then in August or September. Uh, again, something I would like to thank Silla. Alan is not here. Both are board members. They've been helping me a lot on that. But, uh, but this is about sort of educating the market and educating, sort of informing the, the current and, and new fund managers. So we started our own podcast series. So each, trying to do it each month. Sometimes the, the periods are a bit larger, but um, new one coming out with EIF pretty soon. We had a recording. Silla did it yesterday, I think. So working on that. But uh, the idea is to have a sort a 45 60 minute talk with an LP to understand how they invest do they invest here how they choose so any of you know the funds looking to fundraise could you know listen to it and and understand how the, the LP thinks so really happy about this this novelty thing as well and I put like different stuff here not to burden us too much so we organized 12 events ourselves, of course, participated in other bigger events, uh, had about 20 plus media exposures. So this is something about sort of educating the, the wider audience or talking about what the industry is doing. Um, and I would like to thank uh, uh, our legal and regulatory team, which is Antti Kristel, Maido and Karola. They actually are really, really very operational and work a lot on with the state and commenting latest, I think, was Estonian fintech strategy, uh, and are now also meeting with with uh, with Rahab, uh, anti money laundering um, organization. Uh, why the LinkedIn logo is here uh, again? Like something we haven't been doing like deliberately, but our LinkedIn followers grew from about doubled in a year, so one one thousand two hundred to two thousand. 300. Uh, so I guess, again, making an impact talking about the industry has been something, uh, something very logical. And I think really good events was the, was the um, um, secure, um, defense topic, as well as the now becoming traditional, why I put these photos is especially, is, is the end of the year, we gather with the other organizations in the market. Most, many of you were there, so has become really a, a good event. So now about the member statistics, I must warn you, they're preliminary numbers, but, uh, but uh, and then of course our members are in uh, professional funds as well as family office type of investors. So they're integrated here. I will share the longer version, um, I think in a few weeks. Uh, but of course the growth is quite substantial again. Um, for, uh, we, our, our uh, members, uh, total members, then together with real estate and Defton, of course, are managing over three billion at the moment, and uh, and 1.8 without real estate. Uh, professional funds currently, by the end of the, at the end of the year, of course, manage 1.26 million, and you can also see the numbers of which in VC and and private equity in front mezzanine funds. And later, if I will share it, you can dig into it. I will not maybe stop on these numbers at the moment, but of course, good to show to the world that the Estonian funding market has been growing year on year. Let's see what 2023 will bring. <laughs> Most probably we will <laughs> close the shut down that slide then, but um, investment activity as well was really high. Um, it is, of course, there are different reasons. There, one of the reasons is also that we have new members which are now included in the statistics. So uh, would be good to bring it out here. And of course, for example, Startup Wise Guys is now included and, and that has also affected. Uh, but still the growth is, is even without that there. Uh, so about 200 million invested by, by professional funds and about five, 450 by all our members. So meaning different family offices and, and, and these, these kinds of investors too. Uh, as to divestments, we had 19, oh sorry, the, it's 2022, and uh, 13 uh, were done by professional funds. Uh, and dry powder at the moment, by the end of the year, was about 600 million, and you can see then the, 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 the fund strategies as well, how much is there. So there is, there is capital, uh, which is good news. Um, so this year most probably will be pretty nice year <laughs> for funds, but let's see what's going to happen after that. Yeah, so way forward, um, I think I put only this one slide. So we just wanted to say it has 
really grown in importance the Nordic Baltic cooperation and something that Marcos has been leading in our board also no potentially Nordic Baltic fund of fund idea which is now interest is growing growing from the Nordics countries as well um, we want to build our data better, we want to do more analytics, we want to be sort of the center of, of having all the market data. Definitely something I want to work on a lot, education program, roadshows, regulatory events, communication and, and growth of SVC of, of course as well. Uh, because the larger we are, the more impact we have on the market and the more visible we are. Uh, wanted to, yesterday we launched, so uh, it's going to be big, uh, I think, because Estonia is organizing this year. As you may know, it's the 11th year, and, uh, and uh, it's our most traditional biggest event of bringing LPs, GPs together. Uh, this year, we really try to bring more Nordic people, also sending um, personal invitations to U.S. Asian investors, so really trying to, to do, do it well. Um, and we will be meeting in Pärnu. The ticket sale started yesterday, and uh, if uh, you guys, somebody wants to accommodate in head-on, which is fully booked for us, then I sh you should be fast in Fienta because uh, in the ticket sales platform because um, um, this may sell out. Um, oh, I did. Uh, so let's. These are the same. So I go uh, go over those to to be very time conscious. Those are the same things uh, uh, that I listed there before. Uh, working more in, with Invest Europe on data, um, doing more roadshows, um, growing SVCA. Um, continuing legal regulatory and bringing people together um, with events, of course, the largest for us being this year at the summit.